Hey, everybody. This is Dr. Mitch Gann, Chief Medical Officer of Hue Life USA. And here's another version, so to speak, of our Daily Dose, which is a Hue Life web series. We started talking about some of the different type of treatments that are available for osteoporosis and osteopenia. And I thought it was appropriate to give you some ideas and information of things that are not normally talked about in conventional and traditional physicians and healthcare providers offices. One of the things that they talk about, of course, are the use of calcium, which by the way, by itself could be a problem, too much calcium. In any case, you should never really take more than 500 milligrams pretty much from all sources. That means from tablets, from what you eat, etc. More than that, can actually put down what we call exogenous calcium into your arteries, causing coronary artery disease, and also it is used by cancer to divide. We also have a lot of the biphosphonate drugs that are often asked to be used in this process for patients. Unfortunately, many of, the, many of them have severe side effects. So what are some of the natural things? Well, one thing is to recognize that bone needs stress. So if you never exercise, you're gonna have weaker bones. It's been shown over and over in studies that people that are sedentary or sit all day or perhaps in a wheelchair, their bones are much weaker than those that are exercising. Weight-bearing exercises, walking, uh, jumping on a trampoline, a personal trampoline, which we call rebounding. Light exercises, especially like with weights, all will help this particular problem. They even found there are certain frequencies in near-infrared, and you've heard me talk about this before, that also stimulate bone growth. If you're stimulating the mitochondria, those special elements that create the energy, the adenosine triphosphate within the cells, then of course you're stimulating the growth and health of bone as well. More important than calcium is magnesium. Bone requires magnesium for health. Make sure you're getting a good amount of magnesium in your diet, utilizing a good salt of magnesium. Magnesium oxide, for example, is not a good source. That's the traditional from the ground magnesium, and it's very poorly absorbed. But magnesium chloride and a few of the others, aspartate, essentra, otherwise could be very helpful. And yes, vitamin D is a good component. It does keep the D keeps the calcium going into bone, but we also note if you use too much vitamin D, meaning more than 10,000 units a day, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, because there are people that need to, it can actually lay calcium also into the artery. So make sure your vitamin D also has vitamin K2, at least 145 micrograms a day, or take it separately. There is even rat studies that show the rats that were fed a decent amount of vitamin C the bones were actually stronger. So we know vitamin C is essential for pretty much all the white blood cells and the immune system health. It is as essential for bone health too. So make sure you're taking vitamin C and because it is water soluble, take it throughout the day. One mineral not talked about too much, but so important when it comes to strong bones is called boron. A milligram of boron a day also helps to strengthen the bones. Now, if you add these different things together and then put on hormone support, testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, which not only transport the calcium and the minerals into the bone, it maintains the minerals in the bone and strengthen it as the testosterone would. Talk to your doctor about using bioidentical essential hormone replacement therapy, if possible to youthful levels, and that's when I say if possible, depending on your blood work, what other conditions you have, etc. It does make a difference. Think about it. High school kids don't have any type of osteoporosis, typically or osteopenia. We also have seen that when you use different types of stress, like we were talking about, one of them is shockwave therapy. We talked about that in other podcasts previously where this shockwave where you stand up, stand on this machine that sends these uh, waves through the body. Well, it does stress the bone. It can and does make the bone stronger. And so that helps as well. Let me not forget. I mean, it's easy to forget this, but mind body. I have a 
PhD in psychoneuroimmunology, mind body medicine. There is no question. It's totally clear what you think often is what you get. If you feel your program is healthy, if you do the things we just talked about, if you take enough vitamin K, A, zinc, and these other minerals that we call resveratrol as we did in the past episode, and you feel and know that you are healthy, you are of sound body and mind, you take the time to meditate, it's going to make a huge difference in how healthy we can be. Consider all these secondary, but can be primary ways of keeping your bones strong. Maybe not so much the medications and pharmaceuticals, maybe more towards prevention and utilizing these natural methods. Does it make sense? Don't take my word for it. Look them up, do the research. Oh, it's there. Thousands of articles are there for you. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mitch Gen, Chief Medical Officer for Hue Light USA. Thank you so much for watching this daily dose for Hue Light. God bless everyone. We'll see you soon for some more great, hopefully, and important, interesting information. We'll talk soon.